Hey guys, uh, what's up? Welcome to our podcast this week. This is the Jenna and Julian podcast. Jenna just got caffeinated right at the start. You choking on caffeine? Yeah. Sorry, I almost couldn't human. I was drinking five otter, otter juice. Good caffeinating on camera. Thank you. <laughs> and on mic. Um, I do what I can. Yeah. You do what you want. I do what I want. So uh, today's podcast might not be on the funnier side. Um, there's currently something happening yeah, as we're podcasting. Yeah, we've, we've been watching the Baltimore riots basically on a live stream all day. Yeah. Right? All day. We've been following it basically all day from this morning till right now, which is about 6.40 in the evening. Uh, so I, I guess for those of you who aren't in on what's going on or, or those who are not in the country or you, any reason why you don't know what's happening, uh, there has been riots in the city of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, basically, you know, caused, I, you know, I don't want to say caused by, but it's, it's, it happened after there was a funeral a week ago, a week ago, a week ago this happened with the police. Yeah. The, there was a man in police custody. Um, he was 25. His name was uh, Freddie Gray and he, he died in police custody and there's, there's a, there's a. There's a kind of details that weren't really given out. It's a and gray it seemed, area. People No pun are, intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people were outraged. And uh, today they, is, is they, kind of when yeah, it reached. They thought that the police had something to do with him dying because he died. Yeah. And his funeral was today. And there's been protests happening all week. There's been protests happening all week. Right. And I think it's important that we that we distinct, distinguish the word protest from what else happened today. Cause right. Right. Today, there was a lot of violence in Baltimore. There were riots. There was looting. Yeah. Well, I mean, what happened, there were a bunch of high school students that put on social media that they wanted to march from, I forget where, to I forget where, but they were going to march. And the police had saw that, and they were there preemptively. And these high school kids basically turned it into a fucking riot. Yeah. And they started throwing stones. There were, what, last I heard, somewhere between 7 and 15 cops injured. Yeah, one was unresponsive. People <clears throat> injured. Yeah, and it was serious. I mean, watching the stream was, was pretty terrifying because cause we were watching this live stream of what was happening all, like, all day. Uh, it was terrifying because there's nothing. looting every store I mean, that they could. B- like, not even getting to the point of where people are, like, smashing windows and stealing stuff and setting fire. The 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 violence against the cops is what is the most terrifying to me because, you know, obviously it's in this really, really shitty position where the cops can't retaliate at these people or else right. they find themselves in a situation just like what caused this one. Right. You don't want to cause any more deaths. Yeah. In the situation. And, you know, there's lines and lines of cops. Obviously not enough cops because right, they're backing people, up and they're riot gear. These people literally set up these things, these yeah. riots, as they want to kill the cops. Yeah. And some people were saying that they were organized by gangs or, you know, younger kids that basically have nothing to fucking lose. Like, yeah. they don't give a shit. Yeah. But it clearly, like, when you're watching the riots, they have nothing to do with the person that died. They have everything to do with people being vigilantes and exactly looting. so much there, it wasn't organized it was yeah. nothing there was just people no. uh smashing cop cars and lighting cars on fire and we're currently watching four fires yeah someone had lit the frame of what was supposed to be a senior citizen's home they lit the wooden frame on fire because they were building it it was under construction and the embers of that fire have now spread to people's homes like houses people's houses are now on fire right and when this was happening earlier today and i turned on the live stream i was i was sort of looking through like i have a list on twitter of like youtubers uh comedians a list on you on um like any sort of celebrity and like yep some people care but the amount of people that didn't care or didn't even like acknowledge it that were just sort of whatever about it where it sort of baffles me sometimes when something like so you cannot ignore it that's going on in our country that people are like have no problem just posting selfies and being completely unaware I, i saw i saw that today and i did get really bugged by it because you know the fact that you are in a position where you have the ability to affect change in a situation like this. And I mean, you know, even if you're just a, a normal person who doesn't have any sort of following, the fact that you need to be clued in on this stuff is, is so important. It's like your country, th- these are things that are happening right now. They're important. You can't just turn your head at them. You can't, you know, not acknowledge the fact that they are serious, 
serious and horrible things happening. So what you you know the selfie thing. I saw that today and it, it bugged me a little bit. Right. Uh, and even even if you're not doing anything, you don't have to have an opinion. It, like what I, all I said was like I'm just watching the live stream. Wow, yeah. I tweeted out a link to a live stream yeah. because I think it's important for people to know what's Absolutely. going on. There was a number of people who did what you did. I saw Neve from Catfish was was posting about it, saying, oh "Guys, pay attention. This is happening. It's important." Right. And you uh, you know it's not like. It's not so much so that you need to tell everyone like, oh, this is my opinion on things. Like you said, you don't need to put your opinion out there, but to do the direct opposite and put it out there that you are actively not aware of what's going on by posting just an unassuming selfie during something like this. Or that you don't care. It's pretty, it's, 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 a, it's just, a, you know, it's not a, a big problem. It's just something that agitates us, I think. Right. Um, and you said just before that it does, the, these anger, you know, kind of violent people who have been rioting violently throughout the, the city of Baltimore today, they, they aren't, uh, they don't have a direct um, co- correlation from the Gray death. In fact, so much so that the family of uh, Freddie Gray had funeral. said at the funeral, we want this to be a day of peace. We don't want any Riots. protesting. We, right. They said they don't want protesting, protesting. which is peaceful. But, it, I mean, they asked for that. And the fact that these people who have been so uh, completely just uh, disobedient and, and crazy today um, just show, I mean, how out of touch with, with the whole situation they are. And I think they're not only not, you know, serving any sort of purpose at this point but they're 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 exposing to everyone the entire world is watching baltimore right they're exposing how badly people can behave in the event of chaos in the event of like a you know uh, a tragedy yeah and it showed a a major weakness you know people were criticizing the mayor that she took like five hours to actually Mm. sort of respond to what was going on and they she's quoted earlier this morning as saying that she they wanted to give the people that were being violent space and people had a problem with that word space or like you're literally just letting them cause chaos do something about it she got a lot of flack for that but you're kind of in a position where you can't win because the system is you know kind of corrupt at this point there's some dirty fucking cops a lot of bad shit has been happening Uh, like ferguson and all these things going on is really bringing it to everyone's attention that this is a big issue this this stuff really fucking matters it's getting worse it's not getting better and like no these people that were rioting today are not what normal people would do this is a small group well you know it catches on like it started off as high school students that were rioting and then they cut to a couple hours later and it's just full grown adults out there it's just, really disappointing to see it's, right but we <clears throat> it's important that everyone is paying attention to what's happening and it it, it just po- sort of bothers me when people don't care yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah they don't fucking give a fuck. No, yeah, it's 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 definitely um, it's a frustrating thing. And you mentioned that uh, you know she got kind of hate from for saying that we need to give them space. We need the police to kind of back off and not get right in there. And we were watching the stream today, and what what you just said reminded me of the point where there was this guy um, Miguel. What was his name? Miguel. There was a reporter sure. for CNN. He was in there, like in there, in oh, the yeah. middle of everything. He had his fo- He was listening to his, uh, you know, the studio on his phone because his receiver and his IFB wouldn't work. So he had his mic and he had his phone, and he was in the middle of everything. And he was really just trying to explain everything from the ground of it happening. And there was this guy who he, you know, he let talk into the mic, and this guy was like, you know, you know, this is my problem, like, you know. The, the, the reason that this is happening is the way that the cops are handling it. Like earlier today, the cops weren't doing anything, and that's right. a problem. And I disagree with that. I think the fact that they are, are refraining from getting in and directly conflicting as much as they can help it is only to like self-preserve. Right. They cannot afford to go right. in and then have hand-to-hand combat and have people die. Right, and like you said earlier today, like the way that they were rioting – you cannot bring police into a situation where they openly know that their lives are being threatened yeah. and expect no violence exactly. to occur. I mean, it's a war zone. You it, look at the stream. It's right. a fucking war so zone what's, out there. So what is our choice? Do we go in there and stop it knowing yeah. that violence is currently occurring and will occur to a greater level? Or do we pull back? What do we do? You can't win. You can't win. It's a lose-lose situation. And unfortunately... I think what they did today, as nasty and as gross it was to watch, is the right move. They had to kind of just stay as 
compact in a unit, uh, the cops with their riot gear as possible while moving in, but also not moving too far in. And you kind of just have to let this shit happen. Like all this damage going on. It's like, what, what are they to do? Like, you know, there's no giant, like there's uh, what I was talking to Jen about earlier. There's, there's no mass, uh, form of arresting people you can't like throw a giant net over a group of people and be like okay you're all arrested right. there's no way to do that uh, uh, uh like non-violently right and what what i was starting to go earlier when i was talking earlier is that this kind of points out like that there is a weakness in cities to be able to deal with a riot on this scale do you know what i mean absolutely baltimore yeah. is a fairly large city it's like the fifth largest in the u.s in the united yeah. states and you know they these high school kids kind yeah. of pointed out just what can happen when a bunch of people decide to organize themselves and create something violent. Yeah. It's kind of fucking terrifying. Do you know what I mean? It's scary and it's unfortunate that it takes something like this to really open our eyes and say, well, right. there's well, a giant... Well, they needed reinforcement from all over the place and everyone's like, well, why isn't anyone coming? It kind of takes a long fucking time to organize that many police officers. Yeah, the scale and, of what's going on is kind of, right. is kind of unprecedented. And it's not like something that we were previously prepared for. Yeah. Like, obviously, they're prepared for protests, and, mm-hmm. and they're not prepared for a riot on this scale. And I, I was so frustrated. That's why I was watching the live stream earlier today. I was so frustrated that in Los Angeles, we could not get one single fucking news station that was providing us with any live stream. It, it took way too long. We were watching, uh, there was KTLA 5, we were watching ABC 7, and they both were going back and forth. There was, like, a segment on the Apple Watch. For like twenty minutes I during this threw my entire, phone into the TV. like, and they finally adjusted and went to the live shot of C, basically CNN and this local news station of Baltimore. But it took them forever. They cut to the weatherman with his giant fucking teeth like twenty seven times, talking about how there's sunshine. Yeah. Like, it really bothers me, and I think that... Well, it per- I think that's part of the problem. Right, it perpetuates the yeah. culture yeah. of not really caring unless it's in our fucking back door. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, this is... They, they declared it a state of emergency. It's it, technically, by definition, an emergency. And the fact that not every single news station across the entire United States is not showing live streams of this nonstop, right. commentating on what's happening, getting the word out. I mean... It's just, in my opinion, it's a little bit irresponsible. Like we were saying, it's a bigger scale of being a person on the on on Twitter, on the internet with reach, who's not giving any sort of attention to it. Posting a selfie, hey guys, happy Monday. You know, this is this. Right. That's that's a smaller scale of irresponsibility, and I think this news station kind of neglecting to just give everything to this, the forefront of the, of the news today is is bigger. Right. Irresponsibility. And, you know, I mean. It, it, what happened today is horrible and not okay. And I'm honestly, although we haven't gotten an official like number of how many people were injured or possibly killed, like this could have gone much worse mm-hmm. than it did. Yeah. Although this is fucking terrible. Yeah. But you could have, if the police had moved in, there could have been many deaths. more deaths. A lot of deaths. A lot of deaths. And like it's sort of sad to me that because people aren't paying attention, they they don't they don't understand what's happening while it's happening. Yeah. You know. What I mean like the people on the news kept being like parents tell your kids to come home because they're assuming that their parents are sitting there watching the fucking news yeah you know what I mean yeah. clearly like th- these people's parents either don't know or you know they're, they're at a job like you're talking about probably like middle class working people that are at work that don't they don't have the ability to know where their kid is from three o'clock to five thirty yeah do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what's so sad about it. These yeah. kids, you know, you're free when you when school's over. They can go on the fucking streets. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It, I, but whatever. It, it bothers me that people don't care while it's happening. Although it was the number one trending topic on Twitter pretty much all day. Yeah. There was still so much like social irresponsibility of people with any sort of reach that were you know trying to help people understand. Hey, kid, yeah. guess what? If there's a fucking riot in your town someday and you want it to be a big deal and you want people to know about it, good fucking luck because apparently no one gives a shit. Yeah. I mean, it's just the whole situation from A to Z is disappointing. The reason it's happening, the way it's being handled, right. the way people are affecting change on it or right. lack thereof. I mean, it's just every angle of this is, is ugly. And we'll see what happens because there's a, a protest scheduled for Saturday. Yeah. I mean, Which now, is five days away. 
now that it's, you know, officially a state of emergency, they've moved in the National Guard and stuff. I think that they're much more prepared than they were now Yeah. for something like this to happen. They're aware of what's happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, after something are better like this, equipped yeah, to deal with it. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's fucking, it blows and, my mind. Yeah, and, and there was the, gov- the governor and the mayor both got on today. Uh, of Maryland and spoken did you see it in their in their face the just the utter like disappointment of like the fact that the people of this city the, are destroying, the, are their, destroying own their own city their own city they're choosing to to act like you know uh, this you know just inhumane people like just right. you know that's that's kind of a contradiction but they're just they're just they're they're digressing into such violence for no reason right. and it's so the opposite of constructive that like if I were a resident of Maryland, I would feel so upset right. and like helpless. Like what? But it's still like, what propels people to suddenly just oh turning a switch? This tragedy happened. Now I turn into a person who's just gonna wreck shop. Right. I'm gonna mindlessly destroy it, things. Right. I'm gonna well, hurt people. Yeah. It really wasn't connected whatsoever. But I, the the people of Baltimore are angry. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. And people and, are angry against the police, and and they have the right to be angry. Yeah. There's a lot of wrong yeah. happening, but the the police. Police, they keep becoming more and more militarized. You know what I mean? They have fucking riot gear. The police now do not look like the police even when I was growing up. You don't have tanks driving through fucking crowds of people when yeah. I was a kid. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's more and more the separation of power is so fucking big. But this is really kind of crazy that this is the first time that the police weren't immediately able to sort of like shut down and stop rioting. Yeah. These kids... They kind of just had to ride it out. Really just... They they sort of yeah. decided that they were going to fucking riot, and they rioted. Yeah. And it was horrible. It was, it was scary to watch. And it was just not that mob right. mentality is... But that... Usually what we see is fucking tanks and yeah. riot gear yeah. and SWAT teams around civilians. You know what I mean? And it's that is also equally on another, like, scale equally as terrifying yeah. to see like what if you know f- some conspiracy theory whatever the police decided that they were going to enslave all of us into a fucking you know government where we had no rights yeah we can't we can't fight against yeah. tanks and yeah. swats and fucking all of that shit yeah we're civilians yeah. so it's sort of terrifying that teenagers were able to like destroy any sort of plan that yeah. that Baltimore could have had for this riot. Yeah. And it's also terrifying when you see the other spectrum of that where it's like tear gas, like all this fucking stuff. We we can't we have no defense against exactly. that. Exactly. There's like and people are angry because their people keep getting killed. Yeah. Our fucking young people keep getting fucking killed by the police. It's yeah. just bad all around. Yeah. It's no a, one can it's win. a weird cycle, man. And it's like we've done this to ourselves, like the way that people have behaved and the way cops have behaved and the way they, you know, civilians have reacted. It's kind of just created this weird dynamic to where whenever this happens, we we face this like, okay, now there's going to be a riot. And now how violent did the police have to get to stop it but not hurt anyone? And then today was like a great example of like, oh. They can't do anything. Right. You know, either they go in there with rubber bullets and start mother like fucking hurting people or they back off and they literally just try to contain it as best they can, which leads to fires, leads to looting, leads to citywide destruction. I mean, it's like so obscene. I couldn't get over that. So they were looting a CVS. Yeah. Which has and then a, they lit the fucking... Which has a pharmacy in it, mind you. So there's just fucking drugs being stolen all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. Then they decided to just light the CVS on fire. Yeah. Like, what the actual fuck? Yeah. So and then were, they were putting out the CVS fire and somebody stabbed the hose that they were putting out the fire with. Yeah. It's senseless. It's like we were watching maybe 10 minutes ago and uh, some fucking guy flipped off the camera. On a news yeah. channel, like this woman was standing outside of the the four fires that were burning, that was like yeah. transferring yeah. into residential homes. Yeah, and this guy, the they pan the camera over, and he just flips the fucking yeah. camera. I was uh, the guy Miguel, that reporter. I believe his name is Miguel. I was looking at his Twitter and his pictures from like a couple days ago, and he had like tweeted a picture of his jacket, and he's like, "Some woman spit on me, telling me that CNN is misre- misrepresenting." African Americans, and he was like, "It's getting weird." And I'm not going to speak for CNN because I don't really know what you know what they were saying or yeah, why they, they might have been misconstrued or whatever. Saying, right. Yeah, but it's just the bottom line is it's just like nuts out there. People are angry and they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to they don't know how to constructively right. participate. Anger. Yeah, everyone's so frustrated and pissed off, and it's just reached this weird kind of 
barbaric precipice where right. today people are just throwing rocks at human beings. Right. So well, yeah, we get it. We're, you're very angry, and we're all angry, yeah. and we don't want any more people dying at the hands of the police wrongfully. But you know, it's not going to help. You know, just lighting a bunch of fucking fires. You know yeah, I mean? Like Phil DeFranco, did you see his tweet? No, what did he say? He tweeted a picture of the CBS on fire. He said, I too like to light on my local CBS on fire when I don't agree with something. <laughs> I love Phil. It's just, it's so disheartening. It's so it frustrating on so many levels. I mean, because like you and me talk uh, about this situation and I'm sure lots and lots of other people can have this conversation and say, you know, in this situation... You know, one of my fellow, you know, citizens of my city got wrongfully murdered, maybe, and I'm angry about it. What am I going to do? And, like, you may not be able to answer that question with a specific answer, but you know you're not going to do that. Like, you know that there's, you know, in your mind, there are so many different things that you're going to go through, even in a state of anger, that is not that. So it's, like, wild to me how so many people are just... Well, I mean, the way that it started, honestly, I can understand why it escalated to that. You get a group of teenagers that all have peer pressure. Yeah, I'm forgetting that it's like young people. It's, that's who started it. Yeah. It's fun when you're in a group of teenagers and you yeah. see somebody throw a brick through a cop car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That gets everybody fired up. Yeah. And then that's how things escalate. Yeah. And then once everybody sees things that are burning, okay, cool, might as well go rob a 7-Eleven because no one's going to know that I did it. Yeah. And then looting of one store turns into looting of 10 stores, turns into fires, turns into anybody that wants to get away with anything, they can. Yep. I think you're right. You know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is that young people with you know, a, a different conscience than someone that's a full grown adult that was thinking clearly, yeah. they just don't fucking care. Yeah. They haven't really developed a sense of, you know, the repercussions of the way some things will go down. Right. Because it's, it's not only repercussions of like, you know, what, what, what will my friends do or what will people around me do or no, what, it's like people what, getting will, hurt. what will we do as yeah. a group together? Yeah. Because when you're in a group of young teenagers, what you do together is worse than what you would ever do by yourself. Absolutely. It's the you, mob mentality. Right. You yeah. find yourself doing things that you wouldn't normally do yeah. alone because you're <laughs> behind this veil of other people. Absolutely. But what they don't realize is that once the rest of the world sees that someone has cast the first stone, all right, now fuck it. Let's fucking watch this fucking building burn. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. they don't realize how much that just like them by themselves will influence everyone else. Absolutely. I just, it bothers me. And it, it bothered me that, you know, we were getting a lack of news coverage. It bothered me that there was a lack of coverage sense of on urgency Twitter. from anybody yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. And I mean, it's just disappointing all around. And we were also talking earlier, not to switch topics completely, but we were talking about earlier about how there's a fucking. That crazy earthquake in Nepal yeah. killed 4,000 people. 4,000 people They had in Nepal. an aftershock of like a six point whatever magnitude earthquake Unreal. after the fact. People are sleeping outside and we live in California, but we could have one of those uh, earthquakes here. Any day. And I think what's crazy about that is, first of all, with all these things combined, there was a train that blew off tracks in Louisiana. We yeah. saw that. It was like, crazy, like a, a truck that was on fire. And, yeah. yeah, a bunch of storms. It, was like, it feels very apocalyptic. Yeah. And the first thing that I said, I was like, is it a full fucking moon today? <laughs> yeah. So it's coming in a couple days, right? Right, yeah. Days in six days, there will be a full moon. So get ready Look at for everyone's losing a, their little, mind. a little bit of crazy. But, I mean, it's wild that you say, you know, you remind us that we live in California, just as bad damage and just as tragic earthquakes can happen in where we live. And if it happened in California, the entire country would go upside down. People would be like, holy fucking shit. California, right. Southern California, Los Angeles, Hollywood got hit with this thing. We need to fix it. But because right. it's Nepal, it's right. like, oh, you know, it's kind Again, of, oh, yeah, they're hurt. But a lack know. of a sense of urgency. Although yeah. I have seen some people, a lot of people, There's tweet out links yep. and direct people. There's a lot of people who have followings who are being very awesome about it. Right. And I think that's great. And I think the power of the internet makes these types of events way easier to contribute to the you know resolving right. of but what it's I, still kind of sad just to see i agree but what i think is crazy about the earthquake situation is that you know in los angeles we have deemed earthquakes as something that we're willing to live with you know what i mean yeah the weather's beautiful you know it's nice yeah. whatever earthquakes eh, well they only happen every once in a while yeah 
And uh, <laughs> that, like the East Coast, they deal with snow for fucking six months out of the year. They've yeah. deemed that as something that they're willing to live with. Ice storms, all that kind of thing. Hurricanes, you know, the tornado alley and stuff. They've deemed tornadoes as something they're willing to live with. Yeah. People that live near volcanoes. Okay, yeah, we'll live with that. You have to decide like sort of what you're what willing, natural disaster what you're, you're down willing with. to live with. Yeah. But most of Los Angeles, in my opinion, have deemed earthquakes as something that they're willing to live with with but do not know what to do in the case of an earthquake and I think a perfect example of that is when we lived on the other side of the hill and there was an earthquake and you know we it woke us up in the middle of the night it was like under our house basically yeah. the epicenter yeah. we turned on the news after it was over it felt it wasn't even that bad it was like a three point whatever right yeah. and it, you know it woke us up at like six in the morning we turn on the news. It felt like it was shaking for fucking ever, and it really wasn't. The dogs are going crazy. We turn on the news, and, you know, they're doing their schmoozy whatever news coverage. And they get somebody on the phone, and they're like, all right, you know, give us some tips on, on how to deal with an earthquake. And they're like, okay, you got to get to your bathtub and then lay down. And they're like, no, no, no. And they cut off the collar, and they were like, that's not correct. Don't listen to that. Yeah. Okay, let's get another person on the phone. What do you do in an that. earthquake? And they're I like, remember that. okay, you got to get to a door. You got to stand in the middle yeah. of the door. There is a serious, serious lack of of information going around Los Angeles that would prepare people for that type of disaster to happen here. Because most people don't have a fucking clue. They, there's little ones that happen all the time and people are like, whoa, better get on Twitter. Yeah. They have no idea yeah. Yeah. what to do in that scenario. Yeah. My dad, I mean, we had an earthquake the other day. Yeah. And my dad texted me and uh, I like chuckled at the text, but in, you know, I was, it, it, was, it was an important thing he said. He said, you know, uh, you know, be safe, have a plan in place. That's right. all he said. And I, you know, I was like, that's, you know, I, I appreciate that because, right. you know, as, as much as it was a mild earthquake and maybe we've only had mild ones for the last, for how long, whatever, all it takes is one. Like and then you years, really need yeah. to know what the fuck to do. I even told Jen, I was like, hey, like my dad just texted me. I, we still have like that jug of water in that, in the safety room. We have room more with, than one jug of water. We yeah. got water on No, we water got like on jugs water. of water and we got like canned beans and, you know, stuff to eat and stuff to have. But like it's, you're absolutely right. There's no, there's no, you know, broad set of information or right. set of kind of no protocol really for people who who aren't really in right, the know because, to right. just kind of follow. Well, where I grew up, the way that we were educated was we were educated heavily for house fires, for like lightning strikes, like yeah. what to do when there's a big storm. Yeah. What do you do if you're in the middle of a field? Like where do you go? What what do you do basically? Because that was you know the most that we had to deal with was yeah. if your house catches on fire or if you're caught in a big giant storm, mm -hmm. what should you do? Yeah. Or like a lot of snow, there's like an ice storm or whatever yeah, yeah. cuts out all the yeah. power. You know, what do you do? But we didn't have to prepare for earthquakes. Yeah, because you can get them. That happened. Yeah. It's shocking to me that people can live in a place where you know it's possible to have that, like, magnitude of a disaster happen and people don't have a clue as to what to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to be the devil's advocate a little bit, earthquakes are a little bit dicey in terms of what you do when they happen. Right. You know it's it's a little different than other natural disasters in that like a whole building could just tumble over like in a split second and right. you're like okay what the fuck right but you're absolutely right i still i still do agree you know the fact that there's so so much conflicting information like oh some people say get in a doorway some someone says get in your bathtub you know what i mean so <laughs> it's like you really have to you, you well, really do I, have no, to think about I'm, these things i totally agree that an earthquake is a different type of natural disaster than many other ones because yeah. it can hit at any time yeah. without any warning and you ridiculous. can be in any place place Absolutely. that you can't yeah. really you know be prepared yeah. Yeah. but like tornadoes also hit and people have no. like legitimate shelters no, to live in yeah. because they know how serious they are and it sort of baffles me a little bit that there's no scale of education like people when there's a tornado coming although they will have time they can get to public places where they have like these shelters built yeah. for people in that scenario yep. but like there's i'll give i'll give california this like on um, venice beach and stuff like that there are tsunami escape signs it literally just has a sign pointing away from the water <laughs> that way but still i mean yeah. that's something it's you're right you're right you know what i mean yeah. if you were visiting from it's another like country, it's, or you yeah. have no idea. Like that's one of yeah. the biggest tourist spots in the United States, like Santa Monica Pier and all yeah. that area, that beach, yeah. and people have not a fucking clue what to do. Yeah. 
Like if if a tsunami hit and that first wave that comes in and everybody starts fucking dancing in it and stuff, like no, run away. That's the warning wave. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people aren't equipped with that knowledge. You know what I mean? Yeah. It it sort of makes me a little bit nervous. It, yeah. Well, it needs to be fixed. I agree. Like fucking, I was talking about it with Rome. And she was telling, I didn't know this, that there's a, such a thing that they call the triangle of life, where if you like get in, like, a, you know how your bed is maybe here. Yeah. If you get just beside your bed, like if something were to fall from above you, it would hit the bed and then tip so that you could have a little triangle of life, essentially, to stand like, or Like sit. if the roof hit your fucking... Right, if the roof fell down, yeah, yeah. oh, sorry, it would then, you know, yeah. not hit you yeah. and that it could be the difference between life and death yeah. if you're in a yeah. giant things building. like that need to be common knowledge they right. need, if you live here they need to be i know that and it should be common knowledge that yeah. you should have rations of water especially when we live in yeah. a place where there is no fucking water for sure you know for sure well i mean what knock on wood hopefully there's i no mean it's inevitable they happen absolutely big ones absolutely. like that happen no, every 150 years or, or about and we're kind of overdue for one so i mean let's knock on wood but yeah yeah it's gonna happen yeah but saying we're overdue for one we are i know but i'm not trying you're the most superstitious person i know i'm I'm surprised you're even saying that i'm not trying to jinx anything it's just science they're plates i I understand how earthquakes work (laughs) (laughs) but anyways i mean um, I've, 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 I don't know. It just feels very overwhelming today. Yeah. Today, I feel like it's, you're right. It's just a lot. It's a lot to take in. And, and as much as sometimes I feel like I can only read so much news in a day and then I'm like, okay, you know, I gotta, I gotta go live my life. I gotta, you know, get this out of my yeah. head. Cause when you like marinate in it, it's very hard to do normal things yeah. because it's very depressing. No. Yeah. But because I, it's so real. It's, right. Today yeah. was just a, this was a lot. Yeah. You know? So sorry that the podcast wasn't super light and happy. Yeah, but you should let us know your thoughts. Please do. Let us know um, Yeah, just anything that you feel or think without getting you know too political. But yeah. just please be respectful of people in the comment section. Um, yeah. I think we can make this a, <clears throat> a good discussion. A good discussion yeah. without yeah. it being an angry because one. Because a good discussion is important. It, you know, it, it makes people aware right. of things. People should be talking so. about this more. Which is why we chose to, to podcast about it, honestly. We were we were debating it, but then we thought, you know, it's it's important. We have a voice here, so let's let's podcast and about it. And it's important not to fucking just ignore everything that's yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, thank you guys for listening to the podcast and watching the podcast today, even though, like I said, it wasn't a happy, funny one. Um, thanks for talking about this and, you know, being, like, being on it. I think that's important. But uh, we'll be back next week with another broadcast. Word. 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 <laughs> we're going to Canada for a few days until then. Canada! It's not even a joke. We're really going to Toronto. No, we're really we're going, going to Toronto, Toronto to, for, for Fan, fan Fest. Fest. Yeah. So if you're going to Toronto Fan Fest, I will see you there. Yeah, we'll see you guys. I know, mixed in. It was so fucking bizarre today. Mixed in with... You know, people being like, hey, do you have a link for the for the live stream? It's like, I won tickets to your meet and greet. I'm like, I don't even know how to hear it today. I'm very happy for you. Yeah. For those of you that won tickets to my meet and greet. Nice job. I was sort of like. We were trying to just focus yeah. on this. But um, like I said, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye, friends. All right. Bye.